Hey, what's up travelers? Welcome into this little video of ours. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so first of all, I wanted to say thank you for um, supporting me and subscribing. I just hit a thousand subscribers, so that's really nice. I probably could have gotten a little bit farther if I wasn't such a lazy Pisces. But hey, I want to put more effort into that channel. And I'm here at my new place ready to just start making more content. So in honor of this Virgo moon, um, I had the inspiration of doing a video about cusps. Now cusps are a very uh, conflicted matter uh, astrologically because some people will claim they do not exist. Others will claim that they are in fact real. Um, some people will be just like me and kind of like stand in between. Um, one thing that I would like to bring to you guys in this video is an actual um, earthly and practical perspective uh, about cusps. Now, I think often with astrology, we forget that the solar system actually is something physical and not just a bunch of numbers on a piece of paper or on a computer screen. Uh, us modern astrologers often even don't really know how to cast a chart by ourselves, just looking at the sky. We're not really all that well versed into the actual earth element aspect of astrology. It's more so air, fire, water, you know, but the earth we often forget and I feel it's important to take into account. Now, one of the main arguments against cusps is that things are either one thing or another. Um, and this is really an earth kind of oriented argument, right? But if there is one thing that we can keep in mind is that the actual celestial objects, be it the sun, the moon, Jupiter, Venus, whatever, they're not a singular point. They actually have a width in the sky. They're white, you know, they occupy more than just one minute or one second of a degree. So it is actually physically possible for an object to be in two signs at the same time. Now, this is what we would call uh, the angular diameter, diameter, diameter. So for instance, here, um, this info comes from uh, uh, Wikipedia, the most trustful source we can get. Uh, but really, I don't think there should be any problems with these actual um, lengths. So here we can see that the sun is actually 31 minutes and 27 seconds wide. So, you know, it moves at about one degree a day, but it's still 30, uh, like a little bit over half a, a degree wide. So if you were to look at, let's say this is... Um, can you see my mouse? Okay, so let's say this line here is the beginning of a sign, right? Well, as the sun is actually traveling, there's a point in which it's actually in two signs, right? Because we only count uh, the placement of the sun as being in one sign once its middle is actually in that sign. But if you were born a few minutes before the sun actually traveled in a sign, you actually occupy both signs, right? And I mean, you would have to be in about 15 minutes or 16 minutes um, of the actual, you know, you would have to be at like the 29 degree and 45 minutes up to 29.59 for you to have both or to be on the other side and to be within the first 15 minutes of a sign to physically be in both signs and I mean some people will argue that cusps actually occupy a wider aspect some people will say five degrees other will say three degrees but I thought that was interesting, right? Because the sun can actually have a part of its body in two signs. So I think that's really something we can take into account. And it also matches um, the argument that some people have that 
A cusp is only a cusp when it's in the last degree, right? Um, and here you can see that the moon occupies about the same width. But then if you look at Venus, I mean, it's only uh, 9.7 seconds, right? So you, you really don't get much of a cusp with these placements. The most you can get is Jupiter, which is almost half a minute which is really not a lot, right? If you are at the 29th degree and 59th second and over the half of that, I mean, 29 degrees, 59 minutes and over 30 seconds in that minute, well, first of all, most astrology programs might actually uh, round up the number and put you in the other sign, but you would actually be in both, but it would be really hard, right? Now, this is a really earthly kind of perspective of things, right? I got Virgo moon, the moon is in Virgo right now, and this video was actually inspired by a fellow Virgo moon, uh, just from a question she had. Um, but that, that, that's, that's part of it. Other part of it that I think is important to understand is that the cycle is not static. It's a dynamic, it's a way of energy, it's like a flow, right? So I would argue that the farther away from the beginning of a sign a planet gets, the more energy and experiences it has accumulated in that sign. And as it travels through the deacons, through the degrees, up to the last one, it's getting closer to the end of that energy and closer to the beginning of the other energy, right? It's just like the seasons. So, you know, here it's not winter yet. We're a few days from winter, but it still feels like winter. There's snow outside. Like, we're not fully in it, but, you know, it feels like winter outside. And I know it's just a calendar thing. It's not really based on anything too um, precise, right? But it's the same thing with astrology. As, as a planet gets closer to the other sign, it's not yet in the other sign, but it starts to get a feel for that other sign's energy. Let's not forget that tropical astrology really is based on the seasons. So I would argue that the closest, the, the closer the planet gets to the end of the sign, the closer it gets to the unfoldment of that energy. It's still in the sign it's in, but it still gets closer and closer and closer and closer, right? Um, it's almost like the sun too is so magnetic that the aura it, it occupies is a bit even larger than just what we see. I mean, just the fact that we gravitate and orbit around it, you know, it means that the pull of the sun is so big. But I feel like there is a truth to cusps. It doesn't mean that you are both signs. Your ruler is still your ruler. But I think it it's open to debate, at least. And it's open to actually creating new ways of thinking about the cycles and the deacons and how the story unfolds. So that's really important. Um, really, that's just something I wanted to bring. I thought it was so interesting when I thought about it. It really is a simple thing, right? But when you think about it, the fact that, yes, the sun can actually be in more than one sign and so can the moon, it's like... It's mind blowing because then you, when you meet people who have these peculiar placements, you can try and look and see if they really kind of do have this dual nature to them. Anyway, that was just a quick little video. Thanks for tuning in, tuning out.